He would go around. Your baby Ocho, um, gonna be out to help Dan Schneider, um, creepy, creepy behavior, um, and his Nickelodeon, um, career. Right. Found with money and ask to take That's Nicole, but he's always one to one. photos of the kids' feet. Mm hmm. That shit is weird. That's rocky. That's mad rock, bro. I'm sorry, yes, the kids' feet. Yes. The children's. Feet. Feet. Okay. Yeah, th right. their toes. Okay. And I remember thinking it was weird and silly almost as a kid. And I remember my mom going, don't go over there. Hello, Rishi Sunak, the prime minister of England here. Now, Nickelodeon is one of the most beloved networks of all time. Many of us have fond memories watching shows like Rugrats or Keenan and Kel. The company was an undisputed powerhouse of entertainment, largely thanks to Dan Schneider. Dan not only created, but was also a writer for Victorious, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly, and more. He was one of, if not the most successful television producers in recent memory. His tenure as showrunner enabled Nickelodeon to stay at the top for over two decades. However, in March 2018, the company abruptly cut ties with him. It turns out there was a slew of allegations that he hypersexualized the young girls on his shows and displayed abusive behavior towards others. Sadly, the stage curtains on set were hiding something sinister for years. This is how Dan Schneider became Nickelodeon's biggest scandal. Now here's a word from today's sponsor, Kamikoto. Kamikoto makes great high quality Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques. They also... In my entire life. They still look brilliant. Now back to the video. Dan Schneider's goo pop scene starring Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney Spears' younger sister, was extremely alarming. She was the lead in Zoe 101, which first aired in January 2005. In one of the episode's backpack, Schneider included a scene in which a goo pop blasted all over her face as if she was Riley Reed. Here, I have another goo pop. Thanks. I don't know why the other one squirted out like that. All I do is squeeze a little like this. Appallingly, Dan had the scene redone multiple times. Mind you, Jamie Lynn was only 13 years old when the episode aired. It was inappropriate and highlighted the perversion lurking behind the... But at the same moment, for me as a kid, I don't, I don't really think, think of nothing of it, though. I don't really think of nothing of it. Like, like, I'm pretty sure, like, like when you were, like, when y'all was a kid, y'all didn't really think, like, nothing of it. Yeah, I just thought that the show was fire, bro. That was your childhood, like, show, like... Camera. I mean, if he could do this to mega-celebrity Britney Spears' younger sister, then he could do it to anyone. There was even a rumor he was the father of her child when she got pregnant at the age of 16. Dan the Van Schneider extended his creepy touch to the show iCarly, which premiered in September 2007. In one scene involving a guy from England, Dan oddly had the word hobnocker included. A TikToker later looked into its meaning and found some questionable results. I swear you're all just a bunch of hobnockers. Hobnockers? I'm going... So I looked up what it meant on Urban Dictionary and... What is that? Another TikTok pointed out how uncomfortable the lead actress Miranda Cosgrove looked around him. Look how she tries to avoid Dan by stepping back. Pay attention to how he holds her and hugs her. Look how uncomfortable Miranda looks. She looks wild and comfortable. I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. In Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, she detailed how a person called the creator gave her massages was abusive and pressured her to drink when she was underage. In it, she wrote, The creator pressured her to sip his whiskey mixed with coffee and cream by telling her the victorious cast would get drunk together all the time. It's widely believed she was referring to Dan Holder Titer, She's a Fighter Schneider. McCurdy even revealed Nickelodeon unashamedly attempted to give her $300,000 as a so-called thank you gift in exchange for never talking publicly about her experience at Nickelodeon. She ended up turning it down, a decision she was proud of. It's not happening. That sounds like hush money to me. Not doing it. Not taking it. And then I do remember leaning against, I think I talk about this in the book, but I lean against my bed and I'm like, well, shoot, that could put up my nieces through college. Like, that was some good money. But I am ultimately proud of, of my decision there. When the show Victorious debuted in March 2010, Dan was running off the fumes of victory, no pun intended, after iCarly was a smash hit. Now, while iCarly was catered towards kids, Victorious had more of an edgy teen vibe. 
The cast was also slightly older than usual, ranging from around 15 to 20 years of age. And well, perhaps that's yeah. why Dan felt he could up the sexual ante with a more mature cast. For example, he had a red-haired Ariana Grande act out disgusting scenes like this. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. Is it possible for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? Mmm, I'm thirsty! It's not possible! It's very not possible. You gotta put the water in your... You gotta put, you gotta put the bottle in your mouth, bro. Like, I honestly couldn't tell if Schneider was legitimately preparing Ariana for a career on the hub in case things went south. He even had her sneak in weird sexual innuendos. One time my brother found a vacuum cleaner in our church basement. He took it home and now he keeps it in his room. Well, you should call the church and tell me he has it. Oh, they wouldn't want it back. Dan, she just turned 18, Schneider went so far as to cater to a fetish crowd by including this foot scene. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. This nigga Dan Schneider, um, is a foot fetish guy, bro. He loves feet, bro. He's into that shit, bro. I'm like. He appeared to enjoy feet more than Larry Strong from House of Dragon. Off camera, Dan was known for having young girls sit in his lap and caressing them as if he was a bridge troll. In addition, he was known for constantly pushing for skimpier and skimpier costumes. Dan's petrifying behavior didn't stop there. Daniela Monet, the actress who played Trina Vega, said their outfits were not age appropriate and that she wouldn't even wear some of that today as an adult. Alexa Nikolas, an actress on Zoe 101, also mentioned Schneider was oddly present for all of her wardrobe fittings. Whenever I had wardrobe fittings, he always had to be in them. But fast forward, when I was doing TV shows like Mad Men or Walking Dead and Cold Case, you know, whatever the show was, I started to realize going like, oh, so the creator isn't in the room. In addition, she revealed her biker shorts were cut one time because they were apparently too long. I had to wear biker shorts underneath my skirts and they had to cut the biker shorts because the biker shorts were even too long for the skirts that I had to wear. Dan's petrifying behavior didn't stop there. According to a caller on the Revenge of the Sis talk show, he held pool parties with only child actors and not their parents. He would have pool parties and invite all the kids over and be like, oh, we'll just take care of the kids. No adults need to come over. So he was having, he was having pool parties with these kids uh, for, that were on the shows uh, without any kind of adult supervision going on. Interestingly, Schneider's relationship with his writers was strained. Some of them reported he was abusive and that they were too afraid to stand up to him because of his ability to ruin their careers. Jenny Kilgan, a writer for The Amanda Show, actually filed a lawsuit citing a hostile work environment. The case was eventually settled out of court for an undisclosed amount of money. Kilgan actually never returned to the television industry again. It wasn't until 2013 when Nickelodeon themselves finally launched an official investigation into Schneider. It was spurred after complaints of abuse on the set of Sam and Cat. Causes for concern reportedly included Schneider's well-documented temper and his previous tweets containing photos of young female actors' toes. Yeah, that's totally not reminiscent of Silence of the Lambs. Nickelodeon's former president of content and production, Russell Hicks, denied those claims, though. In March 2018, Nickelodeon finally parted ways with Dan the legal age of consent is 16 depending on the state Schneider. An investigation by Viacom CBS, Nickelodeon's parent company, reported he could be verbally abusive but found no evidence of sexual misconduct. He was supposedly given a $7 million payout to leave. After this, Schneider didn't work on any other projects and dropped off the radar for several years. You know, typical EDP 445 behavior. When asked about his exit in 2021 by the New York Times, he said, I took a break to take care of a lot of stuff that I'd let go by the wayside for decades. Whatever I do next, I wanted to outdo what I've done in the past. Regarding his Quentin Tarantino-like obsession with feet, the article went on to state, Schneider described such allegations as ridiculous and said kids find feet goofy and funny. The comedy was totally innocent, he said. In addition, Dan mentioned he created a pilot for an unnamed television network and lost over 100 pounds. Ultimately, Dan Schneider's entire career at Nickelodeon was a shocking one. I mean, he truly defined comedy for millennials and Generation Z.
Every script he touched turned to gold like he was a talented but perverted King Midas. He had so many successful shows, but his rise also fueled his demise. His importance to Nickelodeon allowed him to get away with certain, um, let's just say creative liberties. They just wanted to please him in order to keep their pockets full. The company turned a blind eye to what was going on for years. They even tried to pay Jeanette McCurdy hush money. That's despicable. Although Schneider adamantly repeated that he had done nothing wrong, I think at the very least he should have been aware what he was putting out. As the showrunner, it was his responsibility to make sure the talent was being portrayed appropriately on national television. Children are vulnerable and Dan should have been protecting them instead of exploiting them for his own pleasure. The kids deserve to feel safe instead of creeped out. Their job was hard enough as it was. They either had no clue what was going on or chose to ignore it in order to appease the almighty Dan Club Penguin Schneider. He flagrantly abused his power, which is not okay. He scarred the young actresses for life and terrified the writers to the point where one left the industry. Personally, I believe Schneider deserved to be fired publicly and face humiliation. Instead, he quietly slipped out with $7 million. I hope he never returns to Hollywood ever again. He would sit in the chair, and I would come out, I would do the spin, and then he would look at the wardrobe artist and say, can I have the Polaroids? I just got like... Yeah. full body chill it's bad and you're you're you know like the thing with dan schneider is i don't know what's up with him but all i do know is that he put children in vulnerable positions that he like legit wrote himself and didn't really seem to have the care to go hey like maybe this looks producing like 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 great shows and all that shit like drake and josh zoe victorious um i call it king and the cow amanda show this man this man charlie he's weird bro like, he's weird bro he like that, that, that man is very weird bro like mad mad weird like he got some foot fetish for girls, little girls and shit. Like, that shit is mad weird, bro. Like, son is weird. I ain't gonna lie, son is weird. So, yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. We just checking out you are.